हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एनएस इंस्टीट्यूट अ कंप्लीट केमिस्ट्री क्लासरूम प्रोग्राम इन दिस क्लास वी विल लर्न अबाउट एक्टिव एंड पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट व्हाट आर द डेफिनेशंस ऑफ दिस एक्टिव एंड पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम देन वी विल लुक इनटू द मैकेनिस्टिक एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दिस एक्टिव एंड पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट वी विल हैव सम एग्जांपल्स एंड फाइनली वी विल टेक केयर अबाउट द डिवेसिक डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन दिस एक्टिव एंड पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम okay so first of all one question should come into our mind that how elements transport through the cell membrane okay so you can see that the elements in high concentration comes through the biological membrane to the low concentration very easily across the concentration gradient that is from high to low concentration and this is called the passive transport now if the elements have to go to the opposite direction that is from low concentration to the high concentration then you must need an energy to do why because it will not be a self flow so you must need an energy to do that because it is not spontaneous through this and it is called as active transport now the elements like iron zinc copper molybdenum comes inside the cell against the concentration gradient since their concentration increases by many thousand folds inside the cell it would be interesting to discuss how the specific receptor proteins allows only some selected elements to come inside the cell so it can be passive diffusion as per the knowledge we have already gained so far and it can be done through an ion specific channel see that active and passive transport both are main biological process and which play an important role in supplying nutrients water oxygen and other essential molecules to cells and also by removing waste products both active and passive transport works for the same cause but with different movement one is from low to high concentration gradient and another is from high to low concentration gradient now active transport requires chemical energy because it because it is a movement of biochemicals from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration whereas in case of passive transport it moves the biochemicals from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration so it doesn't require any kind of energy okay so now if we have to give a definition regarding this active transport then we can say that the movement of molecules across the cell membrane pumping the molecules against the concentration gradient using atp energy is called active transport and now this kind of energy is required because we are pumping or we are pushing the molecules from low to high concentration gradient and this energy is required which is in the form of atp the movement of these kind of molecules is form low to high concentration gradient which means that they move against the concentration gradient right and with the use of this atp it pumps the molecules from low to high concentration gradient whereas in case of passive transport the definition can be the movement of molecules within and across the cell membrane and thus transporting it through the concentration gradient that is from high to low concentration gradient without a using any kind of energy like the atp energy and this is called the passive transport here no energy is required so no atp energy is required in this kind of transport or in this kind of passive transport and the movement of this kind of molecules is from high concentration to low concentration which means they move along the concentration gradient whereas in case of active transport we have seen that the movement is just against the concentration gradient so in this case or in these passive transport the molecules are moved from uh, uh, high to low concentration gradient now we will try to discuss the mechanistic aspect through which the ion actually transport across the cell membrane so there can be a simple diffusion process as you have already uh, just seen in the slide that there can be a very simple diffusion process 
through which the ion passes through the channel and there can also be a carrier or there can also be a channel which is carrying that element or ion to pass through the cell membrane and in this case we call it as facilitated diffusion so in our last uh, classes we have already learned about these ion channels and ion carriers so, th so through these kind of ion channels and ion carriers the ion can pass through the cell membrane and this is actually under the passive transport or passive diffusion process but there can be a situation that ions has to go against the concentration gradient that is from low concentration to high concentration that means from a low concentrated situation to a high concentrated system and that is actually against the passive diffusion process so in this case it energy will be required so for to uh, to fulfill these kind of requirement atp would be converted to adp to for the production of this kind of energy and we call it as primary active transport because energy is required to pump these kind of ions from low concentration to high concentration gradient so basically this is the primary active transport process and these kind of process we have already seen when we were discussing about the sodium potassium pump so in that case also the energy was provided by the atp hydrolysis that is atp was being converted to adp so that is basically the active transport process now there can be another situation where two ions they actually coupled energetically coupled with each other either go at the same time say at the time one go out and other ion comes inside the cell or both of them either go out or come inside the cell and this is called the secondary active transport again actually this is coupled by the energy or it can be named as energetically coupled with which is with each other and therefore this is called as secondary active transport process now we should look into some basic differences between these active transport and passive transport now active transport requires cellular energy because it is passing the molecules from low concentration to high concentration gradient whereas in case of passive transport it doesn't require any kind of cellular energy the in case of active transport it flows from lower concentrated areas to the higher concentrated areas whereas in case of passive transport it flows from the higher concentrated system to the lower concentrated system active transport involved in transporting all the molecules including complex sugars proteins large cells ions etc whereas passive transport is usually involved in transporting the stuffs like soluble molecules which includes water oxygen carbon dioxide monosaccharides lipids etc now active transport is actually involved in the transportation of different molecules in the cell whereas passive transport is involved in maintaining the equilibrium level in the cell active transport is an energetic process because energy is required in this case whereas passive transport is only a physical process and in active transport actually it requires some carrier protein whereas in case of passive transport carrier protein is not involved at all so now moving to the last part of this class movement of a solute across a membrane from its high concentration region to its low concentration region is associated with the free energy change that is del g negative and this process is called passive transport so basically passive transport uh, transport is movement of a solute from higher concentration gradient to low concentration gradient on the other hand movement of a solute species against its concentration gradient that is from low to high concentration gradient is called active transport and here the free energy change that is del g would be positive and therefore the external energy is required or the atp energy is required here thus the passive transport is thermodynamically favored and it can go on spontaneously while the active transport needs to be coupled with another thermodynamically favored process to make the resultant del g negative and that's why it requires the external energy 
Generally, ATP hydrolysis is coupled with these kind of active transport system because for this ATP hydrolysis, del G is almost minus 30 kJ per mole, which is actually making the overall or the resultant del G negative for the, uh, for the overall active transport process. And we have already seen that ion pumps carry out the process of this kind of active transport. So thank you for today's class. In this class, we have already discussed that how these elements are transported across the cell membrane. They can be either passive or active transport. Then we have already learned some ion specific channels through which ion can transport across the cell membrane. And uh, after that, we have already go through these, uh, go through the uh, differences between these active and passive transport. So once again, thank you for today's class. And still, if you have any doubt regarding this class, you can directly contact us through the website www.nsnst.com, or you can drop a mail at nsnst@gmail.com, or you can directly call, message, or WhatsApp us in the given number. Once again, thank you, and see you in the next class.